Hello and welcome to a special edition of uh, Conscious TV where we have two guests and Renata and I are co-hosting. So our guests today are Hamid Ali, who's known as A.H. Almas when he writes. Hi, Hamid. Hi. Hi, Ian. <laughs> Karen Johnson, Hi, who Ian. works with uh, Hamid and Renata. Renata, my wife, and myself. Hello. And the program is about human relating and relationships to all of us are so important in so many different ways and so many different levels. And we're going to have an open discussion. Renata and I are married. Karen and Hamid are good friends and they work together. They run together the Ridwan School, the Diamond Approach. And we're all going to talk about our relationship with each other and also the wider implications of that. So I want to just preempt it by saying that we're in Amsterdam and Renata and I actually met in Holland 25 years ago and we had a very strong meeting to start with and in a week we were together, living together and have been together ever since. <laughs> and we came from different backgrounds and we had many challenges in the early days of our relationship. And we still have the odd challenge now and again. And it's different with, with Karen and Hamid because they were, fr were friends and now, and now they're working together. But just tell us briefly how it was when you first met each other. Well, it's interesting actually just to hear how you met, that there was some kind of a draw. Uh, what, it, what attracts us to some individuals and not others and what makes us want to connect or not is, is a mystery uh, to to everyone, we can't explain, well, why and why not? There's some kind of intelligence that's functioning there from the start. And sometimes we only see that in hindsight. When I first met Hamid, um, he was picking up a friend to go to a meeting and uh, we hadn't planned to meet, but he walked into the house. I was in college and I was sitting on the carpet doing my art project and uh, he walked in the room and he stood above me and uh, he had a very broad, sweet, kind grin and his teeth and his smile were bigger than his body. It's the main thing I remember, it was just how enormous that smile was. And uh, I felt such a friendly acknowledgement and there was an immediate meeting uh, that we didn't follow up on until many years later. I guess it was a couple of years later when uh, we found ourselves riding to Boulder, Colorado together. That's, where, a, that's what I remember. Yeah. That uh, ride in the v uh, Volkswagen in a bug. We were going to f driving from California to Colorado, from San Francisco to Boulder, which was took us, I don't know, uh, almost days. 20 hours or two days. And we were talking all the time. And, and I mean, he told me everything about himself. <laughs> 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 he wanted to know everything about it. I was talking about it. We were, just, just for some reason, free to talk openly about everything. Immediately. Immediately. And that wasn't typical for me mm. or for him. He was very shy. Yeah. I tended to be pretty shy. Um, which people don't believe at this point, but <laughs> I didn't talk easily. And uh, so we just chatted up a storm and uh, haven't quit yet, but it was very easy. And that's one thing about our relationship from the beginning. There was ease, there was comfort, there was immediate trust, actually. And... Uh, Looking back on it, I think that was one of the main ingredients that allowed our relationship to really flower. Um, both of us had very good and trusting relationships with our mothers. We could e easily be with them and talk with them, but we found each other easy. And we were open and easy, and there was some kind of innocence in it from the very beginning. Yeah, we were both innocent and naive. At the same time. Yeah. It's true. We haven't learned much yet, but we're at the beginning. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so it's a start to the friendship that kept developing, getting deeper and deeper. And then uh, as the work, you know, developed, you know, 
know, the friendship held it. At the beginning, you know, the, with the work, uh, I, I was interacting with two friends, Karen and Faisal. And Faisal left after a few years, which was about the time when the Diana approach had developed about 20% of its path. He left, and we're, then she and I were the one who were holding it. And we were two individuals who were birthing the teaching. I am more in the forefront because I was teaching. Karen wasn't teaching, I'm the one who wrote the books. But she was there in the sense in the inquiry. It was a combined inquiry. We each had our own solo inquiry, but we always came back. We were talking every day. She was married, I was married, but every day we were spending four or five hours together talking. Mm. And for years and, and years. We work with each other. And, and I mean, the, and that's how the, much of the teaching developed. She'll have her experiences, I'll have my experiences, and we'll bring them to each other, and the other will have them. You see, we, 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 we give each, each other transmission, and then we discuss them, and we understand them, and, and things develop. Then we'll experience things together. And it, it took many years before we really understood what's this relationship about. And were the difficulties you had, did you have to talk through things where you didn't quite see eye to eye personally? Oh yeah. Yeah, there were different kinds of obstacles that would come up and different um, misunderstandings or sensitivities or hurts. that kind of thing. Hurts. Hurts. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. You got mad at each other. You, you really got mad at each other. Oh, yeah. We were mad. We had fights. I told you shout at each other? We were shouting yeah, at each really? other. Oh, you're so excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we shouted at each other. About we, spiritual at some point. matters? Yeah. Yeah. We shouted about spiritual well, matters? No, no well, there was something. What I don't even remember what we were. I was going through a sensitive period around being seen and acknowledged. and um, I got so angry at him. I said, get on your camel and go back from where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized later, I go, oh, God, that was so, that was not nice. And that was really me, because I realized that I loved him and I didn't want to hurt him. And, but I was very angry and I felt I had been really misrepresented about something. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was... I was very, very mad, uh, and that happened several times, but we'd always worked through it. But there were other times we, we, we also, what's important about how our relationship developed is we really listened to each other, and we trust that there's something in what the other person's saying. Mm -hmm. And we really take it to heart, and we work with it, and look at it. And then we come back with, well, you know, part of what you said was true, but I have to say, you didn't see the whole thing. How does this fit? But I, I just want you to hear me out. And then we go back and forth until it starts to get clear. It's like, oh, okay, I didn't see that part because I had my own take on it. I didn't really get what you were saying fully because that would challenge something for me. And I don't want to lose our friendship over this. And we went through periods where we actually felt like this might be parting of the ways for us. This could mean losing the relationship or losing the intimacy we feel, or we might have to shift the relationship we have and being willing to lose our connection if that's what was true. And that's one thing that really started to be more and more important was that the death of relationship. We needed to face the fact that yeah. our friendship, our relationship, whatever it was, had to die at various mm -hmm. times. Just like going inward, realization, you get to these certain places where you feel like, that's it, I'm a goner. You feel like you're really meeting death in the face and you go into all kinds of emptinesses and places that feel very difficult. And you have to be willing to just go, okay, this could be just it. I'm gone. And that's when a new birth usually comes forward. Mm -hmm. it happens with relationship too, being willing to let go of your ideas of it, of the other person, of yourself and who you are. 
So, so, so the way I see it is more the death of relation means letting go of the way we have known what we are to each other. All the past, all the interactions, all the history, at some point has to disappear. And that means the death of the relation, which means the relation develops in your in mind. There's a habitual thing that happen between two people and patterns of interaction and history and all that. And at some point that becomes a barrier to the true relationship. So at a certain juncture we, we encounter this and each one of us seems to have, have some around the same time or you know a few days in between where we completely drop it and say okay it's, it's, it's gone and then that reveals what is the true relationship. It, it's really, it doesn't die, it die, what dies is the history of the relationship. Mm. Or the ideas or the, even the, the expectations. Ideas. And then yeah. what's left is what is actually there, mm. which made me actually curious when you said when you met here in Amsterdam, something happened. It made me curious, wow, what happened? Well, you said something strong happened. Well, uh what happened for me? I mean, at that point, I came, somebody took me along to this workshop. And um, at that point, I had a wonderful marriage and two, two sons. And I never ever was thinking about anything spiritual because I was absolutely happy in my mm. life. And, um, and so this person said, well, why don't you come along? Um, I think that's really good for you. And uh, my husband at that point had to go to America on a business trip. And I normally would come on every business trip with him. him. And I said, no, I stay here because we just got a new apartment and I just loved it. And, um, and then this person said, I'm going to this workshop, come along. And that interesting thing was in this moment, it was like my mind stopped. I knew I had to do that. I got a, a ticket for the night train and packed my things. Nothing was going on in my mind. And my husband called from America and said, I said, I'm going to Amsterdam. Uh, I'll be back in a few days. And he said, please, do everything you like, but don't go there. I said, don't worry, and off I went. And I said to myself in the train, whatever is going to happen there, I'm completely open to it, which was a complete foreign thing for me to even think. Interesting, yeah. So I come there and um, Ian was there and you know, he obviously was pulled to me. <laughs> and you know, I was very, you know, my husband was the first lover and lover in my life and you know I was never thinking about outside of my wonderful box I was in and somehow we ended up lying next to each other fully dressed and in this moment I started feeling um, like I was lying with him in, in, in an energetic tube. There was such a pull, almost a magnetic pull happening in this moment. And the feeling was, oh my God, what is this? And he felt so familiar, you know, as if I would know him for lives and lives and lives and lives. And um, mm -hmm. in this moment, I also felt you know, he's my friend, I know him. And um, at the same time, all these questions came up. Who am I? What, it, what is this? What is this world? Mm -hmm. And then when you asked me three days later to come to America, I, I knew I had to do that. I left everything. But mm -hmm. what I really left was I left myself as I knew myself. Mm -hmm. And 
it was like somebody took me and put me into another life. Yeah, yeah. like a death of a life and birth of a, a new death. one. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so that's a very dramatic kind of illustration, yeah. actually, of something that I think in a real relationship happens mm -hmm. uh, intermittently whenever the, the idea of the relationship becomes static or when life becomes static, it's kind of driving to come out again. And the more static it is, the more deadened the relationship mm -hmm. is. Um, and that's how all relationships really end up being kind of deadened. It, to keep it alive means really to keep the love alive. But even more than that is to keep the ideas of the relationship from clamping down. But what I also found, I mean, for me, I always had this idea that relationship is this, the fastest way to myself mm -hmm. or to God. Mm -hmm. And what I experienced in our relationship, in the moment I focused on the relationship, which was not easy, we were completely different people, it did not work. Mm -hmm. If I focused mm -hmm. on myself, mm -hmm. on me finding out who I am, Leaving him yeah. alone, we came together. Yeah. 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 Till I can feel your. Till at times, you know, it's like one wave. Yeah. 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 How did it feel to be in that tube together? Well, it was wonderful. <laughs> it was wonderful. We had we had such a strong energetic connection on on, yeah. on you know in all levels, and I'd been through a period of I'd never been married before. So I've been through a very free period in my life. I think I was 40, 42. in my, my, 40, my 40s. And, and I, I wasn't living anywhere. I was just traveling at that point with a spiritual teacher from country to country. I'd sold everything and just had two suitcases, one with winter clothes, one with summer clothes. So I was a real free agent. And so it was a, it was a tremendous adventure being with Renata, which I loved, and also as she said, we were incredibly different people. So the challenges were immense at times. And we also were living with a spiritual teacher for a time anyway, traveling with him. And that wasn't easy because he had his ways of seeing things and, mm -hmm. and uh, which that was that, that, at the time it was right for me anyway. And then, and then I realized I had to move on and he moved on. But it felt like a little bit like Renata, I was being led and I wasn't in control of the situation mm -hmm. and my life was being led anyway because I had no home and I was just traveling and I was you know one week South America second week would be Eastern Europe we were traveling a lot at that time mm -hmm. so I, I just tried to go with it but I had a lot of personal issues that came up and we had we had some real fights and mm -hmm. uh, and it was at the end of the day as much as we could at that point sitting and down and talking about it but there was something stronger. There was a love that was stronger mm -hmm. that was somehow carrying us through. And then, as Renata says, yes, when we, when we not exactly stepped away saying we were going to necessarily leave each other, but when we stepped away from the focus on just being in the relationship, mm -hmm. something else would be there, mm -hmm. which was holding us. And then we knew that it was right to stay together. And I think we started to move together more and more and recognize that we were an expression of one unit. Mm -hmm. That took time though. Mm -hmm. You were an expression of one unit? Yes, we realized, we both realized that uh -huh. we were expression of oneness and somehow we weren't separate. Uh -huh. And but what was, kind of unit? What kind <laughs> I was of thinking unit? thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Do you the feel expression that now of one kind of unit. at this moment? At the I'm, moment, I'm I feel in connect interconnectedness as, oh, a, uh -huh. as a group. And I'm also aware that we're focusing a lot here now. Uh -huh. And actually, the original purpose of the interview was focused <laughs> more there. I was just but, curious yeah, I know about, you about what happened. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the nature of relating, human relating, yes. is that there is, if there is no interest in the other, there isn't much relating. There's no need to relate. 
there has to be mutual interest. Yes. And a reciprocal, you know, responsiveness, right? And a mutuality in, uh, in the relating of it. So there can be a meeting of each other. And that is one thing that many people don't really understand. It takes a great deal of skill to develop. I had to develop it myself. Mm. Karen was more the relational kind than I was. You know, I, you know, from the beginning I could relate, but I wasn't that interested in relating. I mean, you know, having friends. Well, you were interested in relating social. to me. I was interested, you know, I was interested <laughs> in relating to you, but I wasn't interested in relating yeah, per se. Per se, it was for the work. The relationship yeah. was work not, you know, I was married, yeah. happily married, I was really married, I was second marriage even. <laughs> you know, and uh, it's not like I didn't care about human being, but I wasn't interested in the relational skills. She was very skillful and interested in relations. I learned that more how to be relationally skillful. I mean, how to interact in a way that brings both people out in a way that where they can meet in authentically. And that's a great skill, and most people don't know it's a skill they need to, they think it's just going to happen. It doesn't happen. You have to learn it. But yes. also there's something Renata said yeah. that about going in, too. Yeah. To be able to have responsibility for yourself, for your actions, for your own process, your nature, mm -hmm. that that's the place that one needs to come from. So there has to be an interest not only in the other, but it has to come from one's actual true interest in oneself. Mm -hmm. Trying to gain it through relationship right. can't happen either. So it has to be an outward and inward movement at the same time, right. but really settled in one's own ability to be alone alone with oneself, intimate one, with oneself, and to be able to come from there, and the interest then is more authentic, rather than jumping over into where someone else is mm -hmm. to try to find yourself. You have to really have that more grounded in oneself. So that's an important part of what you were saying. I want to just yeah. add to what Hamid say. Yeah, and, and that's, a, from what I remember, what you said, Renata, is that at the beginning, as you were going to the workshop, you were already somehow in a different place. You were, yes. in, you were in open, you left yes. your life as you know it, so you yes. were more, you just use yourself. Yes. That happened first. Yes. You and, you know, and I think husband, that's important for that husband, meeting to happen. Like you yeah. left an old identity. So, yeah. Yeah. so he knew yeah. it was coming, yeah. it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. And then I was, you know, it was like the whole. I started to have so many essential experiences, you know, because I left these old structures, mm -hmm. you know, and of oneness and, you know, leaving my body, all these things we talked about yesterday. And at the same time, I was confronted with something so mm -hmm. new. I didn't know, I didn't know how to handle. I just felt this pull and, you know, want mm -hmm. to yeah. be, I felt this oneness with him, but didn't know how to lift this oneness <laughs> because there was so much stuff in between. Yeah, so I really needed to learn to just find out for myself. Yeah. Stay yeah. with. Because you had a life, you were married, you had children. Yes. You see, yes. we had to deal with a similar situation. Yeah. Because we are both married to other people. She's married. To her husband, I'm married to my wife, and we've been married. I've been married oh, 35 years or so. Mm -hmm. She's been married twice during our friendship, and now she's married, you know, about 20 years or so. And we had to navigate that. And really, our and, and how to keep a friendship being intimate while we are having other important relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That needs a great deal of skill. Yes, and for us in particular, I think yeah. the draw was really about this energetic attraction for the work to develop. For the truth. Mm -hmm. That we were really That's put a... together in the situation, that the attraction wasn't just about a fulfillment of one another or a relationship for ourselves. 
that it's a relationship that itself became a conduit for the work to develop in a very particular ways. And at the beginning, it was being able to have the honesty, the sincerity, and being able to listen to somebody because we need to challenge each other. We need to not agree on everything. No, you need to It's grab. important that we're able to yeah. grapple with things. And uh, especially during uh, growth spurts in the school and the teaching, where there's a lot of tumult and all kinds of things that need to be addressed. I would come at it one way, I mean, at another, and we need to find a way to navigate the things that we were both seeing, both for the school and the way the work was coming through in the school, and also in our relationship, so that it could be the differences could become uh, ways that we can grow from, not to try to push them away so we can become the same. Because obviously, I'm a very different person mm -hmm. at the outside, that I express myself differently. Um, but we notice that over time we become more like one another in certain situations. And, uh, capacities. Our capacities We've have shifted. We've learned each other capacities in time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even yeah. our demeanor in certain yeah. situations. Yeah. We'll go to a certain social function and I'll be, end up being really quiet in the background and he'll be all <laughs> And I'm going, who is that? <laughs> That's me! <laughs> What am I doing? And I'm sitting there quiet, looking at everything, just feeling where I'm at. And you know, we even started acting like each other. But at the same time, we also had process in ourselves that were very, very different, that were important for how the work developed. So, yeah. so, so one of the ways that the work developed, for instance, is that I will be uh, exploring something, exploring a process in myself, you know, the way the mind interacts with presence, for instance. And, um, uh, and there will be new revelations in our experience. At the beginning, uh, for, uh, for some years, when the first something arises, I feel it and see it vividly. But then I, after seeing it vividly, for a, for a f flash that lasts maybe a minute or two, then I don't see, I just feel it. She is a seer. Mm. Mm. I go to Karen and say, what do you see? And then she tells me, well, it's green here, it's black there, but here it seems a little occlusion. <laughs> What's that about? And then I could explore it. And I see, well, oh, this is something about my mother or my father or something. And as I see it, another quality then will arise. And as she sees it, she will experience it. Mm. And she's, as she's experiencing it, she'll have some stuff arise about it. And I'll ask her a question about it. And then she will self elaborate And she begin to have new ways that presence will arise. It became sort of more like that kind of Dance. interaction, like we were helping each other, we were work, working with each other, and uh, the process, the beingness would manifest, you know, either in me or in her, or sometime together at the same time, as we inquire, like now, most of the time, as we inquire, the new thing develop, while, as we talking a new thing emerge, and we're both contributing our insights and our, our perceptions like, for, like from different angles. And for a long time, how it emerged for us would be a little different. Like Hamid is very uh, one step after the other, slowly going through the issue, the essential aspect will arise. And that's very methodical. In a very methodical way. For me, yeah. I would go through the issues, there would be various things emerging, but I'd go through a whole bunch of things at one time, and then a whole structure would emerge with all of the qualities at once. Like I would have more of a blow up of things occurring, like a whole universe would open up yeah. instead of one quality, one quality, one quality. That happened some, but for me it was much more, a whole lot of things would build and then there'd be yeah. an explosion. Yeah, that was and a so big that, difference between that the process. 
yeah. brought about a slightly different angle of seeing it from an entire structure of all these qualities of, in other words, you know, different aspects of being would show up. Mm -hmm. um, and for him, he might go through one at a time. One essential experience would arise of a different certain quality and character and viscosity. And for me, they would come in multiples. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, I'll be going through a process of learning and opening that might take several weeks or several months. And she's witnessing it. Mm -hmm. you know, and she's sort of participating, but she's not exactly going through everything. And after several months, she will have this explosion where everything I went through will happen all <laughs> at once. At the same time. It's like it bursts. Mm. But, but yeah. Karen, yeah, sorry, Hamid. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Okay, so, but the question I have uh, to you is, um, with the things just you experienced, do you always knew what it was? Do you always had a name for it? There weren't necessarily was it Hamid, names, but Hamid there who gave the name. She's she's not a, a name. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> name. So that well, it depends. No. There were, there were certain things that I named, and yeah. certain, but th we would have the understanding mm -hmm. of what something was. Um, so I could say in long words what they were. So in terms of naming, yes, I would have the knowledge. Yes, but. Um, I think there were certain things that I came up with yeah, names, other no, things... But, but what, what I meant in uh, Karen's process, one of the different... Because she's a good seeing, yeah. she's always, since she was a child, yeah. she, was, she could see. She could see auras, but she could see through nature after that, after she, she began to learn about presence and awareness, mm -hmm. she can see that. She's good at it, she's precise at it. But sometimes she sees this thing, but she doesn't know, she doesn't know how to say it. Yes, yes. Like right? I haven't yeah. conceptualized she, she doesn't yes. know how to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. She can see mm -hmm. it. So I tell her, she, I tell her, what are you experiencing? She said, I don't know. I said, what do you mean? You are experiencing something. She said, yeah, I'm experiencing it. I don't know how to say it. I told her, describe it to me. Yeah. So she just describes it. Mm. And I feel. I feel mm -hmm. precisely. Yeah. I feel yeah. faceted things. I mean, I can feel very precisely, yeah. and I see it, and I know it, but yeah. I don't necessarily always have the words for it. Like, there's a gap sometimes there. Yeah. But yeah. what I just realized as we're talking about our different processes, my experience synthesized things together and showed the relationships of various mm -hmm. qualities to one another mm -hmm. and how they make sense. Mm -hmm. Hamid's mind synthesized mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and brought the teaching together in terms of the knowledge mm -hmm. and making that happen. So it's not mm -hmm. that his experience didn't have the synthesis, but especially at the beginning of our work together, he basically drew the thread through the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And his mind is, had the, the training that the work could come through and actually land and be very clear and precise and draw all the threads together and say, ah, okay, and his mind would have the explosion of the understanding. Mm -hmm. My experience would have the explosion of the understanding. Mm -hmm. And my mind would then go through the steps of, mm -hmm. of that. And it took time for my mind to develop. In fact, I went back to school because I knew I needed the training. I had a good mind. I mean, felt I had a good mind, but I could see that I needed to train it to be able to have a certain logical thinking process. So I got into debate classes. I got into, I did things that would make mm -hmm. me have to use my mind differently, which allowed our relationship to change in a way that I could balance out my ability to experience with my ability to articulate and synthesize in a different way. Yeah. Also, our relationship developed in the sense that he was, I was following in his wake for a long time. And in the school, my position was really uh, kind of an unknown for a long time, to me too. Yeah. But over time, in the last, I'd say 15 years, my development has changed such and become more balanced that our Especially since you started meditating well. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but also, the, it's not just the meditation, but also really staying right. steadfast to various things that Hamid would point out that were really mm -hmm. gaps in my development, um, ways I was in my life that needed to change and so on. But also, I think just uh, our collaboration hit a different level. So part of our relating had to go through not only our, our interpersonal relation, relationship to be able to develop it, but also for me to get more grounded in my realization, to be more steady in it, and to have that uh, be more of paramount importance. And that's something that goes back to what you were saying, something about going inward for you. Mm -hmm. For me, it was I had to find the stability in myself, the willingness to really be alone in my realization. Yeah. And that's where we found a new level of relating that allowed the work to take on a whole nother character, mm. a whole different dimension mm. that we had no idea. Mm. And that's when uh, new universes really opened up, mm. not just for us personally, but in our friendship. Mm. But then our friendship really became a conduit for the teaching. Mm. So I struggled to really develop in a way that could match him more but I had to do it by being alone in yeah. where I was more. And I think that's something that can be seen in any relationship that actually has truth in it, that being alone in yourself mm -hmm. and being able to be with another in your aloneness is the inward intimacy that's needed. So in, in, uh, in our teaching, the way the teaching developed, you know, um, because uh, our friendship was an important part of it, it's, I think, and I think uh, it's not an accident, because I think uh, our being, our true nature, our the ground of being, or the intelligence, intelligent consciousness that is our nature, I think is manifest, has manifested itself in such a way that it brought two people together who complement each other in such a way that a process of a birthing of a teaching can t have other dimension, other steps to it that um, became an important part of the teaching where uh, it showed that the place of rela relationship is understood more completely, not in the non-dual. The non-dual does not address relationship. Mm. No. As simple as that. Mm. Because yeah. the non-dual does not acknowledge the individual very much, and because it doesn't acknowledge the individual, it doesn't acknowledge two interacting. Yeah. Non-dual is the removal of the self and everything is one or beyond everything. But there are other dimensions that can that developed in the in our in the work, in the diamond approach, where it's neither dual nor non-dual. Because people think it's either dual or non-dual. But we spray. found other other ways where relationship can be understood. You see? Okay, but so what's the example of something neither non-dual or dual? What's a specific example? For instance, like, uh, one example, one thing we found out between us is we can interact as two people, right? And, and or we could be two people, two waves part of the same ocean, right? Two way of part of the same ocean are interacting, meeting. That's, that's a relationship from the non-dual. But then, another way is seeing that uh, we are one wave. And that one wave is manifesting itself as two bodies in order for it to manifest part of its uniqueness. Some dimension of true natures cannot be revealed through one individual. Hmm. It will need Not, two yeah. 
or more than two for some mm. of its mysteries to arise. And some of these mysteries, for instance, realizing that unity is not just non-dual unity. Unity can be the unity of what I call singularity, meaning okay. you and I are not just two waves of the same ocean. We are one point, one non-dimensional point of being, and there is no two. Yet, there is communication. So it feels more like so the not communication one appears as <laughs> dual, mm -hmm. but the singularity is you could say non dual, but it's more than non dual. It's like, uh, and then that reveals reality. What that reveals to us in the diamond approach, the dimension that we call it unilocal, which is that each point of time and space includes in it all of time and space. The non-dual goes beyond time and space, relieves time and space. This way of realization, it brings back time and space while being in the timeless. The timelessness that includes all time and all space. So this moment includes all moments. And this point of space You know, includes uh, uh, everything. Include all the galaxies. There is no, so space is, is not eliminated, but its nature is understood differently. That the space, that the fact that there is differences, there are differentiation, doesn't mean there are distances. Just like in a dream, mm -hmm. a dream you could dream of the whole universe, the whole sky. It's all happening in your head. So it brings in the question and the, the question of how things relate to one another, not just how things relate to true nature. So I can feel your heart in me and mine in you when there's no distance. So the, the interrelationship between the two is more of an interpenetration where you don't lose your uniqueness but it's completely open and completely mm -hmm. available to my uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And we can feel ourselves as one without losing our uniqueness. Not just meeting as two individual unique presences, which is a possibility, but to actually inhabit the same location. Mm -hmm. And this location is not a location within time and space only, it's also the timelessness meeting itself at the same time. So that singularity feels like not one, not two. But it's that, and it's not merging, it's not just becoming a mush, it's really your unique you, which is the need to go inward, to be alone in yourself, gives you the possibility of being completely your nature. and the unilocal experience is then being one with another in that same way as totally unique, but completely interpenetrated. And that's many of the um, tankas show the yabyum. Mm -hmm. To me, that yabyum is complete. It's not one on top of the other. It's the interpenetration of the yeah, two. The two coincide. Coincide. Like that's why when you said, we realize we are one unit. I yeah. ask you, what unit? What, mm -hmm. what is the unit? Because that you can see? be many different things for, mm -hmm. the, yeah. for the average individual. Mm -hmm. When they fall in love, they feel they are one. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And that's a glimpse of the potential, yes. but it's nowhere near the miracle yes. of complete interpenetration. Yes. I mean, for most people, physical interpenetration yeah. is the sexual act, yeah. but you can feel that with anyone or anything. Yeah, so the sexuality becomes an approximation to true unity. True unity can happen between any two people. And there's degrees, right. merging, uh, yeah. oneness, <laughs> but this is valuing the particular mm -hmm. and valuing mm -hmm. the totality. So it's... And I can feel that 
all just in myself mm -hmm. because yeah. I experienced it. Yeah. I experienced, I mean, what I, what I would call cosmic orgasm. Yeah. There was just me lying there. Yeah. And it was like every cell in my body had an orgasm, which mm -hmm. I could never reach. With, with, with somebody else. So that's so, interpenetration with your nature. That's right. Yes. And this is that your nature isn't even an expanse. It's like that totality of that expanse is you. Yes, yes. Totally. Yes. As an individual, yeah. it's you. Mm. And your totality as the entirety of true nature, its infiniteness, is the individual and the two galaxies collide mm. as one yet as yeah, two they, they become one galaxy yeah one galaxy but yeah. it's not a merging of the two it's the intertwining mm. remaining yourself as it's it's interesting yeah. how you know hard to find words how for the, it, but you get how the, the school yes. developed from this perspective <laughs> yes right it's true that I was sort of instrumental at the beginning, at the center, sort of the guiding light and the guiding experience and all of that. And Karen was, you know, was there, but she became more and more, we became more of a unit that is a conduit for the teaching. But I'm seeing, I have been seeing for some time, there are many other individuals in the school participating, becoming like part of that mm. unity. Many of our teachers are developed enough that if they are couples, sometimes couples themselves, they have begin, beginning to have that unity. Or in friendship. Or in friendship, or they can have with their students. And I'm, I'm feeling like not just I have developed, Karen has developed, Many of our teachers have developed, many of the students have developed, the whole school is developing. I see it moving, becoming as a one body, yeah. moving mm -hmm. through this world and the worlds beyond. I can see the school continuing to develop as an integrated body that includes physical life and non-physical life. Before death and after death. Okay. As one body that continues. Yeah. And totally and, not of and, our choosing. And, and Karen and I are already learning how to communicate with each other from the two sides of reality. Mm. We're learning how to communicate at a distance. But there are other teachers who are doing that because I think as time passes, because of this relational element that has been important, is that it seems it's going to happen that there will be us and others teachers who will be guiding the school after we die. Mm. We're continuing to be in contact because the unity is not broken. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because it's beyond time and space. Remember yes. it said it includes all time and yes. space? Yeah. Mm. Which is, I'm seeing, I can, I can see it, I can yeah. feel it. I can see it. Yes. Mm. I can see it yeah. too. And it is yeah. interesting. And the impact it will have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is a wonderful and interesting, yeah. beautiful kind of thing. Mm. And people think of it as an ideal. Everybody wants society like that. And I don't know whether the, the whole race ever be like that. But we're seeing how it can happen within at least a group of people. Yeah. And the, the force yeah. is not something that anyone decided. This isn't a business decision to develop these things. It's clearly vessels being carved and worked and filled and, yes. and moved. Yes. Okay, we have to finish in about <laughs> two or three minutes, but you can ask one more question. Renata. No, it was something I experienced <coughs> years ago. Um, you know, which I exactly what you are describing, I already yeah. experienced years ago, which I thought was another dimension, which is just maybe landing through you two here yeah. in this dimension. Yeah. But I, I experienced how that works, will work. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that... Yeah. Interesting. Because it has a life of its own. We talk yeah. about a relationship, now we move to a group, mm -hmm. to a, a larger group. The school is four or five thousand people and it will grow 
yeah. and develop more and how all of those make up one unified field. Yes. And it's living. Yes. One yeah. unified living field. Yeah. Yeah. And people will feel the more they understand the teaching and embody it, the more they will become part of a, this tribe, this community. And people who are not part of it will not be part of it. Yeah. But people that's, benefit that's how we look anyway. at it. Yes. You see, and some people will find another thing to do and they'll go join another group. But it's a, it's a consciousness, uh, like an organism, that is evolving. And it is not our design. It's not our individual designs. So it's a but teaching. By fulfilling our design. So, so the teaching is not only add. presenting itself yeah. in knowledge that is written in books, communicated through teaching, but is expressing itself in people and people having more of that reality, that luminosity, and in groups of people, in a whole, which will be a much bigger force than one individual. Mm. See, I see the whole school as the teacher. The whole school as, as the, the teacher. teacher. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful place to finish. <laughs> So unless you have a burning question, I thought you no, wanted to I ask one more. No, I just wanted to, to mention the dialectic inquiry we, yes. we are doing since some mm -hmm. year, I think is pushing us also in this direction. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's it's part of that development, manifesting how to inquire when, together, yeah. not but just on you your see, own. Dialectic inquiry, the way I expressed it, is something we were doing for yeah, a long yeah. time. At some points, I formulated it into a teaching. Yes. I mm -hmm. sort of conceptualized it. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Okay. With a little help from your friends. Uh, <laughs> lots of help. <laughs> no, 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 no. You are the relation, always the relational one. <laughs> so, Karen and Hamid and Renata, thank you. I think thank we had you. a very beautiful <laughs> conversation. Be with you. Being pleasant. Nice discussion. And thank you for watching Conscious TV out there. And I hope we see you again soon. Goodbye.